now we know why we weren't weren't successful in the past. Well, it's not that we weren't successful, why it wasn't sustainable, right? Emotion needs to be attached. So if you go through life, and again, I had alcohol use disorder. That's in my background. And so if I walked around saying, <clears throat> hi, I'm Victoria. I have alcohol use disorder. People might say, oh, well, how much do you drink? <clears throat> well, I don't. I haven't had a drink in years. But you're saying you have alcohol use disorder. Well, yeah, aren't I supposed to say that, right? In this program, I don't tell you what to say about yourself, to yourself, right? You create it. It's organic. And so instead of a fixed mindset, I am an alcoholic. That is my identity. When you think about the emotion attached to that, does it get you excited? Does it make you want to chase the life of your dreams? Does it make you feel free? If not, let's try something new. Let's try an I am statement followed by the words that you all just came up with about yourselves, about the program, the, the types of people in this program. So when you write that I am statement, What's it sound like now? Just jot it out. I am Steve, do you have yours? Yeah, it's very short. That's why I'm done already. I was going to say, he's he's using a shorthand here. Go for it. I, blessed. I am blessed. Love it. So that's Steve's word. I didn't say, hey, Steve, this is, how, this is what you're going to say. Steve came up with that word. So if Steve's saying, I am blessed. Steve, isn't that something you want more of? Absolutely. Absolutely. We all want that. Right. I would think. And that's why I was going to start writing down a bunch of stuff. And then I thought, no, I can describe it in one word. I am blessed. Yeah. I mean, that's a reason to like get up and get after the day. Whatever that looks like for you, right? That might mean getting after the day, maybe just savoring a cup of coffee without a hangover, feeling the warm sunshine, watching the sunrise, because you're up and alert and blessed. And so when alcohol comes, comes knocking, because it will, because it's a drug, and it's the only drug where society thinks you're the weirdo if you don't use it, right? That's changing. We're all part of that. But when alcohol comes knocking, you now have a choice. You have a choice. What does being blessed mean? It means this, 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 and this to me. All right. You want more of that? Yeah. Can you get it when you drink? No. Would that make it... So is it worth maybe sitting with the craving, talking through it with your with your colleagues, with your other members, talking about it with your coaches? How about you, Scott? What's your I am? Sorry, I muted that for a second. Um, I took a look at what I'd written before and, and I came up with, you know, I'm taking response, I am, 
taking responsibility and accountability for my life on, and its impact on those around me. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure that that seems pretty different direction than Steve's, but um, that's that's where I, I came up. Mm -hmm. It can lead you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I only got nine days in, so yeah. Yeah, nine days in, you know, your neurotransmitters are, are, are coming back online. There's a lot of things going on. And it's, again, it's organic. It's where you are right now. And it's enough. It's worth exploring, worth building on. Yeah, taking personal accountability and responsibility, it's not the easiest thing. It's also Feels good, though. What's that? It does feel good, though. I've always liked, I mean, I've, I've always thought of myself as a responsible person who likes taking care of others. And so I get real satisfaction out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the alcohol has made me fail in that objective and that um, that doesn't feel good, right? So I, I like taking care of others and yeah. the alcohol has impaired my ability to do that. So Scott, on day nine, has, has learning this stuff on the, on the slides I shared about the way that alcohol attacks the brain, right? The first couple of drinks, you feel good, everything's hunky-dory, then... Ah, you know, I was supposed to go home at, in an hour. I didn't, or I said I would do this and I didn't, or right. Does it help you understand? Yeah, I like the science. I mean, I, I've the last several weeks I've been reading and listening about it, and and I, it it works well with my approach to life. I do um, find it helpful, and, and you know, one of the reasons I'm here is because I just lately my tolerance had gotten so high that I found I was forgetting things and mm -hmm. having gaps. And that's just, I, that's where I got to, I can't do this anymore. And so I'm curious about why that's happening. What, and, and so if I understand better, I can act better. So yes, yes I like exactly. Right. You can recognize that. Okay. The person who did those things that wasn't the real me, I was under the influence of, of this substance. It doesn't, it's not a cop out. It's not saying that there are not relationships to be repaired. Certainly not. Yeah. But the first relationship that we establish is with ourselves. With yep. these sorts of exercises, right? I am. What's worth pursuing? Mm -hmm. You clearly value others. You value being a caretaker, a provider for others. That's something worth pursuing. Something yeah, worth pursuing. Yeah. And so through that process, Scott, you know, when we come in here, look, guys, we don't have a lot of self-esteem. You know how you build a self-esteem is by doing esteemable things. And when we are clear of alcohol, those become a lot easier. Our actions line up with our values again. Our words line up with our actions. I once read a quote that was... Um self-esteem or self-respect isn't something you have it's something you do so oh i like that mm. yeah it's really good stuff how about you jennifer care to share yeah just i i'm i thought of myself as a caring loving passionate person uh and successful um so that's kind of where I drew it in. And, and it's, I, I, I really, I'm starting to believe that, that that is really who I am. And I'm not lying to myself anymore. I'm not lying to others unintentionally. I really am that kind and loving person, but I've never been it toward, toward myself. It's always been outwardly. And this is helping me with the, the like-minded people that I get to talk to and know that I'm not alone, thinking all these stories that we discuss with each other, they've done that too. And it's not just me. 
And I love that feeling of being able to look at myself and start to unpack a lot of this garbage um, and get rid of it and, and the clutter, get rid of the clutter and, and look at myself as, you know, I really am successful. I really am caring and loving and I can do those things because I was starting to get to the point where I couldn't do this anymore. I, I, I was at my wits end of, you know, I was, I was just, it wasn't, I was so down on myself and just felt terrible. So I, this has been such an eye opener and such a good experience for me. Not every day is great, but it's teaching me to become a better person to myself and not think of it as selfish, but I am the person that I need to be for, you know, for myself first before I can really truly love and care for all this other stuff. And I'm so grateful to be able to, to be able to identify that and get there. That's amazing, Jennifer. Yes. And you have demonstrated that. I remember uh, when you first came in and you you rearranged your schedule to make time to get on the coaching calls. And that doesn't come naturally to most of us, right? But I've asked some big, heavy questions as a coach. And one of those questions is, do you think alcohol, if you continued on the if you continued on the path you were on, would alcohol have shortened your life expectancy? Everyone raises their hands. They say yes, it would have shortened my life expectancy. And then I say, and would it have severely compromised your quality of life? And without a doubt, everyone raises their hands. You all know that I am a triple negative breast cancer survivor. So boy, oh boy, I had something facing me saying, hey, I want you dead. And while you're still with us, I want to make you miserable. Well, holy cow, the human spirit was alive and well when I got that diagnosis. I'm going to do whatever it takes because that was very real. Nothing subtle about that decline. And I fought like hell. I made time for chemo. Like imagine how crazy it would sound if I said, well, you know, I really, I need to drive carpool. So I can't do chemo today, doc. I'm like what? This thing wants you dead. So we are allowed to save our life. And Jennifer, you've given yourself permission to save your life. I see the emotion. I it feel feels good. good. It feels good to to take that stance, but to take ownership and and make me a priority for once. Mm. Yeah. Kind of feels like we can stop running from alcohol. And run toward life. have a healthy respect for alcohol, right? I'm not going to go poke the bear. I poked that bear enough. Let me see if I can just poke it a little, play with it. Mm -mm. I have a healthy respect for alcohol. I'm not going to drink it. Because I understand the science. Because I understand that I am a human being with a brain. And I have some neural pathways that when alcohol is introduced, they light up like the Audubon. And I have a choice.
but I am no longer afraid of alcohol. I dare say alcohol is a little afraid of me. Because <laughs> I didn't just put it behind me. I joined forces. And you guys are joining forces. Right? Small gorilla band. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're done with your nonsense. We, we've got your playbook. We've got you figured out. I see you with your cute ad advertisements and the, and the fancy glasses. And, you know, those, those are supposed to portray the first two drinks when the prefrontal cortex is slightly compromised and you're feeling more relaxed and euphoric because you have 10 times the dopamine. And I can get my own dopamine. Thank you very much. How do you guys feel? Great. Great. Awesome. Good. Very good. <laughs> Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere in between there. Empowered. <laughs> I feel empowered. Yeah. So if, if alcohol, let's say, okay, when alcohol comes knocking at your door, are you willing to trade what you're getting now for a 30 minute high? Yeah. Although I'll say that it's not just the high, it's the social part of it, right? I struggle with that. Tomorrow night, I have to go to a dinner with um, my um, my most important client. And he loves his wine. We always drink wine. We do this, you know, at least four times a year. We get together for dinner um, so he can show off a bunch of wines he picked out. And he loves it. And that's tomorrow for me. Okay. That's going to be a challenge. So, but It might be a challenge. It might be a chance for you to really remind yourself of who you really are. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you use the word challenge, what, what do you anticipate might be the biggest challenge? So when I play it out in my mind and I say that uh, oh, I'm a, experimenting with an alcohol-free lifestyle for a while. I want to see what happens to my body and my brain if I take, you know, like 90 days off. So and I'm in the middle of that. So I'd love to have these wines, but, you know, tonight I'm just all sparkling water. He'll be, oh, come on, right? Come on. I got this. You, I know you're going to love this one. This is going to be great. You know, just one isn't going to ruin anything that you're doing. It's not going to affect your, is it? Yeah. So just try the Chardonnay and try the, the Pinot, this Pinot I've been looking for for a while. I finally got it. So um, it's just one night, Scott. Mm. Or do you feel fairly certain that that will be the experience? I'd put that at about 40% chance. Okay. So there's a chance that he'll be like, oh, okay. And he'll just be kind of pissed at me all night, um, which isn't great. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is, hey, I'm so glad you brought this up because boy, we are amazing storytellers, aren't we? We mm -hmm. can forecast the future. We know what, what everyone's going to say and think when we, when we order a club soda. You know, the world may in fact stop spinning on its axis if we don't drink the wine. Um, I get it. I totally get it, Scott. And, you know, look, the point is, we don't have to share the whole thing. It's no one's business, first of all. Um, we are also <clears throat> not 20. <laughs> yeah. There are a zillion reasons why someone may not drink on a particular day. Right? Right? So you don't have to put everything out there. Oh man, you should have seen the way I was behaving and I couldn't stop thinking about drinking or not. No, it can be anything. You know, it hasn't been agreeing with me lately. It gives me headaches. Oh, we'll try this variety. I've tried a bunch of different ones. 
it's just not agreeing with me. I'm just going to take a break. I have blood work coming up. Whatever, right? It's very trendy for people in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond to be proactive with their health. So we don't have to tell them it's forever. We don't even have to use the word forever. Ever. <laughs> Sound like Taylor Swift. Ever. Ever. Um, but you can just not drink. Say, you know, I'm just not drinking today. And he may or may not come back with stuff. We don't know. What we do know is that you don't need to taste that rare, special variety. You don't need to. We've all tasted enough. And whether it's the jug on the bottom shelf or this rare variety, the biochemical reactions are exactly the same. It creates the same cascade in our brain. That is true. Mm -hmm. And Scott, you know, tomorrow would be a great opportunity for you to pull out, uh, maybe on the way to the event. Okay. Hey guys, I'm checking in. I'm committed. It might be a cakewalk. It might be so easy. It might be challenging. Regardless, based on your description, you've got it what it takes. Thank you. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he'll say, well, good, I'm glad. You know, you seems like you always drink too much. I'm glad. <laughs> right. More for him. <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, more. That would have been my reaction back in the day. You're not drinking, hooray! I don't have to share. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Look, Scott. I mean, we guys, we have enough trouble find, finding out what's going on between our ears. I'm not trying to figure out what's going on between anyone else's, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, but Scott, you're chasing something more important, and so whatever happens, it'll be all right. Yeah. You'll wake up on, on day the next day and say, oh, I didn't do it. I didn't drink. My yeah, eyes look that's, good. that's what's going to happen. I'm not going to drink tomorrow. I'm just Oh, I know you're not. Yeah, especially now that you told us on the, on this call. <laughs> we're all, we're all going to be cheering you on. We're all here to support you. Thank you. Good stuff. Yeah. Lots of breakthroughs on this call, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing with me and sharing with the team who's going to get to watch this. And thank you for sharing with the listeners. You guys are so close to where they are right now today. Let's finish with some, I don't know, some words of wisdom. Because now when you're on the other side, you are officially inspirational people so there you go <laughs> um so real quick jennifer words of wisdom for our listeners when that craving comes along just take pause and kind of give yourself that couple minutes go for a walk just kind of dial yourself back in and remember why you're doing it and know that it's a great thing great thing mm. thank you jennifer luck yes brenda uh, yeah, now that I'm alcohol free, um, I get to li live the life that I left behind because it was a pretty good one and I'm ready to dig it out and um, move forward. I, I feel so positive. Yeah. So if people are on the fence about booking a call with our team, what do you say they should do, Brenda? Pick up the phone. It'll be the best move you've made your whole life. Wow. I'm sincere. Oh, I haven't felt sure. this way in many, many, many years. And you need to know that. 
Beautiful. Well, we're honored. Scott, words of wisdom. Doing it on your own is unlikely to succeed. If you want to succeed, you need some people around you to support you and hold you accountable. Mm, thank you. And Steve, words of wisdom. Well, this isn't, doesn't necessarily fall into the uh, words of wisdom category, but uh, just do it. You'll never regret it. Love it. Well, as always, you guys, thank you for allowing James, Sarah, me, the whole AFL team to walk this journey with you. It is truly our passion and our honor. So thanks for being here today. And thanks to our listeners. See you soon. Thanks, Victoria. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.